Hello, I'm Jasmine Skye and today for F-Stop Lounge I'm interviewing Anya from Anya Maria Photography based in the Sunshine Coast, Queen Coast yes. Queensland. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking some time out from the Baby Summit to my talk pleasure. with me. My yeah. pleasure. Um, okay, so getting into my favourite five questions, what was your career path? How did you go from being an aspiring photographer to doing it full time for a living? Oh gosh, it's, it's something that took time. So. Uh, Certainly the first years photographing my own children, um, having more children and my, my friends' children. It was my growing phase. Uh, and then, you know, there's always that one person that says, you know what, you're mm. actually pretty good. You should do mm. this. I should go say thank you to them. <laughs> um, that was, you know, it's one step and it's your first session. It's your first paid session. And then it starts getting more and more and that's when you obviously need to stop. Never really made a business plan, but you need to set some goals mm. and actually give some structure to what, you know, someone said to me once, what was it? You're a professional photographer when you start getting paid for it. Yep. So from even if it doesn't matter what the dollar amount is, that first thing, you're a professional photographer. So that literally means you're in business. Yep. Um, so, and how, did, so just from your friends, and sort of, that's sort of, the thing. it kind of grew from so there? So obviously things start off slow and I think mm. that's with maybe possibly most businesses, not every. Yep. And it just got more and more. And with that, I, we had to obviously make the shift with life, personal balance. My husband was working full time. Mm. And so slowly we've come to the stage where I am the only income earner in our family and he is the main provide well provider he looks after our children very well so that's great it's it's something that takes steps i think yep yeah okay so what's your favorite lens gear and why i'm a nikon girl and yep. i know there's not a lot in australia yeah there's been um, a couple teaching i kind of i always look for someone that mm. and and I think the one thing I love about Nikon and that I possibly find I discuss a lot with Canon people is mm -hmm. their focus. Mm -hmm. It is just so, it, it's sharp, especially because I shoot wide open and it's just so quick. And because I do a lot of families or a lot of moments, mm -hmm. I need quick. And I love mm -hmm. that Nikon works in with the way I shoot. Yep. Along with that, I'm a prime lens girl because most people that know me know that I shoot wide open mm -hmm. and primes will give you that. Yep. So, What's your favourite? Oh gosh, it's hard because lately <laughs> I've, I don't want to say I have a favourite because I love... Okay, well what do you use when you forget. shoot? I'd say 50, strangely enough, I've gone back to, it used to be 35, but yep. in the last few months I've gone back to 50 because mm -hmm. I feel they say that 50 mil is what our eye can see and mm -hmm. so it's the more realistic one because when it comes to my shooting, it's about real, so. Sure. Best advice that you have been given in your career? You get a lot of advice during your journey. Um, some that you need, some that you don't need, some that's life changing. Mm. But I feel that the pivotal moments in my career where I made big changes came from me. Because someone can give you some advice that was uh, a lesson they learned from their own mistakes. I mm -hmm. find that you need to make your own to learn that lesson yep. well. So. And what was a moment then in your career that you were kind of, you had a realization and what was what was that about? That I was enough. Mm. Because at the beginning you look for so much from so many different sources that you forget where it actually needs to come from and it's from you, especially when it comes to photography and when it comes to this art of interacting and communicating with people. Yeah. You've got to be you when you do that. You can't be another person. So I think that was a big thing because, you know, it, it's also a popularity contest sometimes, unfortunately, because what's in, what's not. Mm. And when you finally realise, this is what I bring to my sessions, mm. and that's enough. Yeah. It has to be enough. And yeah. that was just, it was a huge realisation and just such a nice weight off. Yeah. And it was being excited to go into my sessions because I was not setting myself up for any kind of expectations. Therefore, I was never get, never getting disappointed. Mm. It was, yeah, that was a big thing for me. Yeah, huge. It took a couple of years though, and I think people, mm. 
don't give themselves the time to actually get there. Yep. It's, you know, we, we need to actually, you do need to learn the basics and what is out there, what you can do and what you can't do. Mm. It's then about finding out what you want to do. Important. I'm trying to do that at the moment myself. <laughs> okay. Okay, so in that tone, so I guess you have, I mean, your style is very, yeah. It's life. It's life and I love that. But it's have you had influences from other photographers? Like who's inspired you on your journey? Me, people, like just life, being outside. Yep. It's like, you know, I think as photographers we're often like, oh, my God, I wish we... I wish I had my camera with me. Mm. It does. You don't have to take that picture, but you need to take in what that picture could be, mm. if that makes sense. Yep. And so whether it's the sunset and the wind and the beach or the rain, mm. just movements and people. And, you know, I, I was in Target the other day and there's like this old couple holding hands and old, cup, old people do yeah. stuff to me. I know. And when I see <laughs> certain gestures, I'm just, and it's that moment. I'm not going to say, sorry, can I take your photo? Yep. <laughs> I think that would be kind of awkward. <laughs> but that's what drives me. Like, it just, you know, watching Melanie do her session mm. and the toddler in the background, I just, I was following him yeah. running around and talking. That's what inspires me the most. There's so many amazing photographers out mm. there and I could name you so many. Yep. It's not even... I swear, especially in Australia, it's shocking mm. the amount of talent we have in this country. It's phenomenal and such such pride being a part of it. Mm. But when I'm looking for inspiration, it comes back to that you. What What is it that makes you stop yep. and want to enjoy that moment? Or what is it that that fire inside? Mm. I think that is the inspiration that you need that you need to translate that into your photography so the photography becomes you. Yeah. That's good. That's great. That's deep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and for so little sleep. I know. You're doing well. Okay, in your opinion, what makes a good photograph stand out from the average? The person that's taken it and what they've put of themselves. I'm always going back to that, but mm. I, I'm such at a place. I can forget focus, I can forget composition, but if you've captured a moment mm. that is then after long gone, mm. you've got me. Yep. You've got me. So to me, it's it's amazing. Strange. I'm a family baby photographer. I'm a people photographer. Yep. Seeing war photographs or mm. documentary stuff just does stuff to me. It's the most... I think documentary photography is the most real there is out there. Yeah, absolutely. And that really, really does something to me. Mm. Yeah, no, I love... Not that I go to look at war photographs <laughs> I before say, I photograph regularly. my baby. <laughs> no. All right, so I've touched on this. You have a beautiful photography style. It's honest, really shows that Thank connection you. between the people you photograph. Any tips you're willing to share on how to create these connections with your clients that you've just met? Like I was actually talking about this 20 minutes ago. That's why I was late. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, to me, there's no such thing as lifestyle. Mm. It's impossible to be the fly in the wall mm. when you're walking around with a big black camera, camera in here. <laughs> it's impossible. Mm -hmm. And also people don't necessarily, on a day-to-day -day basis, dress their best do their hair, especially new mums, mm -hmm. and lie on their bed staring at their babies. We do stare at the babies, but not necessarily in the pretty that we want to capture in an image. Yep. And so I think it's setting yourself up for those moments to unfold mm. because mums stare at their babies all the time. Mm. They smell their baby all the time. They That chest, baby on chest, yep. is just what every single mum has done. Yep. And dads have walked, paced. I know that my husband paced many floors with our baby during the night to get them yeah. back to sleep. And I think it's just bringing those, reminding them yeah. of those realities during the session. Mm -hmm. So I obviously know my light, know what I want. I know where I want them to Place. stand. Yeah. Sometimes I make mistakes mm. and click away and I'm kind of like umming and ahhing. You need to own the mistake. I was saying mm. it yesterday. Mm and walk away from that and do something else. Mm -hmm. But it's setting it up so then it naturally unfolds for me. 
So it's it's the in between moment. It's mm. you know look down at your baby and then you just say a sentence, you make a joke, and yep. it unfolds and they feel comfortable. It's I think making your clients feel comfortable in front of you yep. is what will let that unfold most naturally. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I have fun. Mm. It's you got to enjoy the time you have with your clients. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so you obviously love your black and white conversions. Do you? I just love black and white. I know. I do. I do. Um, do you give your clients both color and black and white versions? Or? I do not. Mm -hmm. I'm very much. And do your clients ask for them occasionally, or? If it is, it's normally in a situation where they've chosen frame displays or a mm. certain collection of images. Yep. And they may want the balance. Yep. And there's eight images, there's five colour, three black and white, they may want that balance. But um, funnily enough, often people don't even need mm. that. So it's, if it is, it's one or two per session and and it's not every session. Yep. So I'm, that's okay. I yep. like, I think I'm very much a traditional photographer, if that's, I mean, I don't know, digital film. Mm. It, with the film days, you chose what you wanted to shoot and you couldn't move away from that. Yeah. So it was, it was colour, it was black and white. And I feel that we kind of need to look at our images sometimes like that too because mm. yeah, with I mean, an intent yeah. and with a, with a finish yep. in mind. I mean, I feel that way too when I've changed something to black and white and I don't change as many as you do. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but like I do feel that if I've chosen it to be black and white, I think it looks better in black and white um, myself. But then they're like, oh, for that same reason, wall okay. or whatever, and then yep. they want it changed or or they just don't like black and white or, you know, whatever. And then I'm like, oh, but it my, looks better in black and I think my editing process, they brought it to where it's not <laughs> yeah. a problem for me to change it back. And your clients are coming to you because they like that too. It's funny. Mm. I, I think I had someone inquire the other day. They're coming up to Noosa for a holiday and she's like, yes, we're interested very much in black and white. So I'm like, yes, you're my kind of person. Yeah. Not that I would ever, especially in Noosa, you, mm. you've also got to lend to what and where you're photographing. Yeah. And, and sometimes the colours are sunset, beautiful. Yes. Yeah. You, you yeah. don't want to kill a sunset no. with a black and white necessarily. No. So yeah. one maybe, Within but reason. you're not going <laughs> to. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So being an artist is so different to running a business. How have you connected the two? Or being a speaker for that matter. <laughs> I was also saying that earlier today. It's being a public and professional speaker is a profession. Mm. It's. You know, it's funny, they say, I think there's a lot of little satire things on photographers, like I'm a photographer slash nanny slash businesswoman. There's just so many slashes that we take on because it's just people. Mm. And as people, there's just so many ways that we can connect. So um, remind me of the question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were getting lost. Okay, so... Um, What's the connect? How have you connected being a businesswoman from being an artist? Because obviously the business is so important, but being an artist is kind of you know the reason why we kind of get into it. But then we realise there's a lot of business involved. So how have you? What ways have you kind of brought it in to make it work for you? God, that's a it's a difficult question. Apart from the sleep deprivation, yeah, it's I kind know. of like um. <laughs> Because honestly, you do read and you study and you go to conferences and you get mentoring done. But like with my initial thing about, you know, advice, you also need to do what works for you. So I can go ask someone else what their pricing is and they can mm. share it with me, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for me. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's, was the transition that I was talking about before. It's a step-by-step -step thing. So you're not necessarily going to start by charging an important amount that could be what supports my family. Yeah. It's a step-by-step -step process, I think. And, oh, sorry, I, I was <laughs> I was trying to get somewhere, I promised you. That's right. Like, yes, no, I've got Do this. you know what? Let's just move on. <laughs> my brain's not working very well either. Okay, so. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. So you've talked about your kids. You've got four beautiful kids. How do you balance your work and life? Well, can but you I kind just of go, you know that. what it is when when the clients that come to you, mm. so it's bringing mm. you into your photography, yep. attracting people that you connect with. That's when business doesn't become the business so much. It's sure. not a huge aspect of it. It just it just happens. Yep. Okay. 
Okay. But do the maths. I think people have forgotten yeah. to actually sit down with that business structure and do mm. the maths of what you do need to... Mm. To survive. To and, survive and, and to get a good... Yeah. What we deserve yeah. to be paid and we deserve to be paid well. So Absolutely. Doing the maths is, is a huge thing. And there's just so many resources that can help you with that, I'm sure, online. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a good, good point. Okay, so getting back to your kids, um, mm. which I think... Which I will be soon. Oh, me too. I know. Um, you've actually kind of told me this already. How do you balance your work and life? You're, I guess you are the, you're the breadwinner, so... Um, I your am. Husband. And... Um, but you still it are a mum. It was a transition. It's funny, my mom. business has been a transition. So mm. obviously when he was working full time and I was doing a few shoots, we, we balanced it and we made it work. Yep. But as things got busier, he gave me more time for my business. He mm -hmm. took on the house and children more to the stage where now mm. I obviously need to dedicate a lot of time to my business yep. and my husband dedicates a lot of time to our children. Yeah. But, but you're still mum at the end of the day. so you I am of, still mum. Yeah. That mother's guilt will never leave me. It's, <laughs> yeah. on, it's a daily reminder for some small reason. Yeah. But I love that with having my own business, I'm, I think that's possibly also my sessions and, and me and how I photograph. Mm. I don't like structure. I'm not a nine to five person. Yep. So I love the freedom mm. of being able to work one day and the next day, if I don't feel like it, like right now, after three months of travel and the baby mm. summer and everything, I'm really ready for a break. Yeah. And I love that I can give that to myself. It may mean that I have to work harder the week after, yeah. but that's my balance. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can work an entire week and have one off. Yep. And I'm happy to do that. So it's my choice if I want to do eight hours a day, four hours a day, five days a week. I make it fit. Yep. So that we do what we do as a family, which is really important to me. Yep. But then I can manage to do what I do. So I was saying before, I travel a lot for my work. Mm. Um, I went to London recently and I brought my girls with me, which was wonderful. Oh, great. But, you know, to me, it's really small part of work is actually doing the session. It's the fun yeah. part. It's the one that lasts the least. Yep. When I travel, I do not edit. I do not touch mm, anything because okay. it's about being in that place at that time. Yep. Which means I come home with a very big energy <laughs> part, but I'm okay with yeah. that. So you need to do what works in well with your family yep. and what you can handle. It needs to be what you can handle because putting yourself under constant stress mm. will not get you anywhere no, fast. Absolutely not. Okay, so you've just said that you've done mentoring overseas, is it? Or shoot, shooting overseas? You've both. done mentoring. I do both now. Okay, so and you've done mentoring all over Australia. So I um, have. Are you, is there any more coming up in the future that you can tell me about? So I've got one and a half months, one and a half months at home now. Okay. And September I'm heading down to Newcastle and Sydney again. So they're the mm -hmm. next two yep. for Australia. There's a possible Perth one Ooh. in November. Mm. Things kind of, uh, I've said this often in this weekend, things happen for a reason and at mm -hmm. the right time. So mm -hmm. like with my workshops, I find that they kind of, happen when they're meant to happen. Yep. It's the email from someone in Perth or the person having a baby mm. and we work in something with someone else. Um, sure. So, yeah. Great. Well, so if anyone wants to know anything. Yeah, so on your website is all that sort of detail? It's a bit of detail, but people yep. just need to contact me because, yep. you know, not, and I'm not saying nothing's impossible and mm. because yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people think, oh, no, that's never going to happen. Yep. But if not I've if learned anything, ask. exactly. Yeah. If I've learned anything over the two years, it's not going to happen if you don't ask. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much for talking thank with you. me today. And this has actually been a great way to end the weekend. To be oh, honest. it's good. It's been my most calm moment. I think of the weekend. <laughs> We're sitting down. <laughs> I know. It's Quietly. Good. All right. Well, thank you so much, and thanks to you guys. I'll see you guys next time.